The war between Israel and Hamas is still raging and as the world calls for a ceasefire, Sky News All-Star Douglas Murray isn't being so diplomatic. The outspoken commentator has been a fierce and vocal critic of Hamas since the terrorist attack on October 7th last year and he's not backing down. Outspoken commentator Douglas Murray has called for the eradication of Hamas since the tragic terrorist attacks on October 7th. And following months of pro-Palestine protests across the globe and widespread calls for a ceasefire, Douglas Murray is urging people to remember the atrocities Hamas inflicted on Israel last year, saying the terrorist organisation must feel the consequences of their actions. Hamas started a war and there's consequences for starting a war in my view. And there is no law of war or nature that says you can start a war, massacre innocent civilians in their homes, kill young people at a rave, and then the moment you start to lose the war that results, say, actually, look, let's uh, hang off, guys, let's, let's call it a draw. No, no such thing. He went on to emphasise the consequences of Hamas's actions must be the total eradication of the terrorist group. And actually, as one of the members of the War Cabinet in Israel the other day uh, said, Benny Gantz, there is no point in putting out three quarters of a fire. You either put the fire out or you don't. You don't put out a bit of the fire and then leave it burning. Extinguish the whole thing or there's no point. And in the case of Gaza, extinguishing the whole thing is destroying Hamas completely, making sure they are never again operationally capable. Murray got into a squabble with a South African journalist about the Israeli response to the attack. Our views might differ, but the facts are the facts, and I want to pick you up on something you just did. I'm you interviewing said, you. I know, but I, yes. don't, I think you're uninformed. No, no, no. So no, let me just, so let me, you are uninformed. <laughs> oh, because really? First of all, yes. you didn't say that Egypt is blockading Gaza. Secondly, you claim that I'm, Israel... I'm talking about so Israel here yeah, no, and I want oh, to move... It's I very to convenient for you to mention Israel because oh. you've clearly got an animus here. Israel is making people more and more increasingly militant. So what is happening at the moment... Israel's is making not, people more militant. ...is not working. Do you right. think that Hamas let's is making back, people more militant or not? Let's go back to the ICJ Do you think that Hamas statement. is making people more militant or not? Well, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a catch-22, isn't it? Oh, I see. So, Douglas, why does the West, so many people in the West, struggle with this moral equivalency? They can't see the difference between the horrors and the evil of October 7th and the necessary self-defence uh, that's taking place in Gaza. Why is the West so conflicted or confused? Well, I'm not sure that lady in question represents the West. <laughs> She's a, a South African journalist who, it turns out, used to work for Al Jazeera. So when she said, I, I, uh, she said to me, I used to live in the region, and uh, then I worked out, ah, oh, Doha from the Al Jazeera studios, where even on a clear day, you can't see uh, Gaza. So. Uh, so she's not emblematic, but she might be emblematic of a type of uh, person in the West who just, everything's always got to be about the Israeli response. It's never on the initial crime that's committed, you know. Uh, th these are people who, to coin a phrase, always mix up the firefighter and the fire. Sky News All-Star Rowan Dean echoes Douglas Murray's sentiments that Hamas must face consequences for their actions, saying Hamas has no intention of stopping their barbaric regime. The reason that calls for a ceasefire are so obscene and why any letting up in the war on Hamas is moral putrid, morally putrid, is that the leaders of Hamas have repeatedly made it crystal clear that they intend to carry out those barbaric murders, rapes, beheadings until every Jewish woman, man and child is dead. So let me reiterate, if your left-leaning ideological way of thinking has you seeing any moral equivalence between the evils of Hamas and the self-defense actions of the Israeli Defense Force, you are simply incapable of telling right from wrong. Maybe time to sit down and take a long, hard look at your ideology. Israel is facing increasing pressure from international partners to agree to a ceasefire in the war. But Douglas Murray sees America's pressure on Israel as a political point-scoring strategy in the lead-up to the November election. 
Joe Biden, similar thing around Europe. They're putting a lot of, they're saying to, they seem to basically be saying to uh, Netanyahu, in the case of Chuck Schumer, you leave, uh, which is mm. disgraceful. But in the case of Cameron, oh, don't finish off the job. Yeah, by the way, I mean, the amazing thing with the Americans pressuring Israel is that the Democrats are pressuring Israel because they believe that the, the conflict could have a result in dampening down some of the vote, mainly in Minnesota, I think, in, uh, the, in, the, in November this year. That's pretty weird. I mean, if, 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 um, if, if I don't know, America was at war, and, uh, you know, this country, Australia, is a great ally of America. But if, if, if uh, your government were to call up uh, the Americans and say, now, look, I know you've got a war on, you're defending your, your people and everything like that, but the, our polling's not great in Adelaide, <laughs> so would you mind stopping? <laughs> I mean, who would do that? Who would do that? If Benjamin Netanyahu called up David Cameron and said, now, look, you know, we don't agree with British foreign policy on some stuff and our polling's bad in Caesarea, what, what kind of a way is this to act? Uh, so the first thing is, yeah, the Americans are doing it for some, some rather cynical and short-term domestic political reasons. He adds former UK Prime Minister David Cameron's pressure on Netanyahu is also very strange. The Lord Cameron one is, is uh, very, very strange. He has, I have to say, always had a pretty negative attitude towards Israel, in my opinion. In 2006, when he was Conservative Party leader, he said Gaza was a concentration camp. I mean, it's obscene, mm. absolutely obscene. What concentration camp has beach resorts and uh, f free trade and, and uh, workers coming in and out to work in neighboring? Uh, uh, anyhow, look, I thought at the time, okay, he's an ignoramus. Uh, he'll learn, he'll grow up. It turns out that, you know, we're in this situation now. He's been brought back as, uh, as foreign minister by Rishi Sunak, who needs some stabilizers on his rather unstable tricycle. <laughs> and, uh, and, and here he is. Uh, uh, say, saying all these things to Israel about how it should behave, you know, I, and I have I have a pretty straightforward one to this, which is I want to hear not very much from a British Foreign Secretary giving advice to Israel as long as the Foreign Office in Britain continues to have utterly insane views towards Israel. And I'll give you one very quickly if I can. The Golan Heights, as you know, strategically incredibly important, uh, captured by Israel 50 years ago, part of Israel, um, one of the most beautiful bits and most one of the most advantageous bits for any enemy enemy of Israel to be on. The official government policy of Britain is that that is occupied territory. Now look, the only person you could give the Golan Heights to is Bashar al-Assad, who's killed about 700,000 Muslims in Syria in the last decade. I mean, it's true that maybe he needs a little bit more ground in his view to kill people <laughs> on, but the idea the British Foreign Secretary holds to a view that the Golan Heights should be given to the Assad <coughs> regime of Syria is in my view insane, and until the British Foreign Office sorts out things like that, I, I'm, uh, I treat everything they, all the advice they give with more than a pinch of salt. Mr Murray is also a very vocal critic of the two-state solution, which several Western leaders have been trying to push for decades, saying it's a fantasy. Well, the first thing is, is that Western politicians keep talking about two-state solution, have done all my life, as the magical solution to everything that goes wrong in the Middle East. They always have said left and right, conservative, Labour, they all, Republican, Democrat, they all say the same thing. They've said for years, decades indeed, if you, give, if you sort, have a two-state solution, uh, then everything else in the Middle East will be fine. It was always a fantasy. The, the economy of Yemen is not going to blossom if the Palestinians get given another state. Um, but, you know, they, they, they always said this. And so now, what the in very interesting thing that's happening, Rita, is that as Biden gets towards the end of this presidency, Blinken, his Secretary of State in particular, seems to have decided that the two-state solution, solving the, the, the two-state solution issue, which his predecessors tried so hard to do, should be his achievement. And he is sending out Ooh. Lord Cameron, David Cameron, the British Foreign Secretary, as his sort of front man to float this idea. The problem is the idea stinks for two reasons very quickly. The first is, if the Palestinians were given another state uh, today, it would be seen as a reward for October the 7th. The response of October 7th, the international community, it would be, let's give the Palestinians another state. That just incentivizes terror. The second thing, however, is, as I say in that piece, the Palestinians were given a state in 2005, 
a state where they had their own free and fair elections, uh, and they voted in Hamas. Uh, and then they stayed in power for 18 years, and Hamas created a terrorist state, and they were not overthrown, and they started a war, mm -hmm. which they're now losing. If they were given another state, yet another state, the Palestinians, this time presumably in the West Bank, all of Israel would be at risk from the same rocket fire, the same terror. I think it's totally un... It's just impossible, certainly now, uh, for such a thing to happen. But I think that it's worth people realizing this and not taking part in this delusion. And Sky News All-Star Andrew Bolt has slammed the Western media for buying into Hamas's lies. Why does even Biden repeat Hamas's claims without question? This war... <laughs> ...has taken a greater toll on innocent civilians than all previous wars in Gaza combined. More than 30,000 Palestinians have been killed, most of whom are not Hamas. Thousands and thousands of innocents, women and children, girls and boys, also orphaned. Well, those Hamas figures can't be right. I mean, how can the death toll early in the war rise in an almost straight line as if there are never periods of less intensive combat? That looks fake. And how could 70% of the dead be women and children? That's a huge propaganda point for Hamas, of course, and its useful idiots in the Western media. These are tiny figures of children on the walls of our studio, one for almost each of the 12,800 kids who have died in Gaza, according to numbers from Gaza's health ministry. Uh, no, just think, Israel reckons it's killed, what, 12,000 Hamas terrorists. But Hamas uh, has said, an official told Reuters last month, uh, it was 6,000. Well, let's split the difference and say, 9,000 Hamas terrorists killed. Yet here Hamas officially claims around 9,000 men in total have died in Gaza, which must mean that every single man killed by Israel was in fact the Hamas terrorist. Not one was a civilian. Not one teacher, shopkeeper, health worker, driver, cripple was killed. And that clearly doesn't make sense. How could Israel in this war kill about 21,000 women and children, but not one male civilian? These figures lie. Hamas lies.